Our two days in Palermo adventure was filled with beach, exploring the local scene and architecture, and we just had a great time. So I want to share what we did in the two days that we visited Palermo. But first, we left the beautiful Cefalu in our wonderful stay. Make sure you check out those videos, Three Days in Cefalu. We have a video for each day. We wanted to stop by a smaller beach before. We ended up in the region of Santa Flavia because my sister's name is Flavia and stumbled upon this gem of a beach. The beach was stunning with so much nature and the water crystal clear, great for snorkeling. However, it was dirty. There was a lot of broken glass on the sand, so I thought it was a little dangerous. Now let's chat about our super unique stay in Palermo at a tile museum known as Museo del Mayolique, I think Stanze El Genio is the accommodations part. It's a hidden gem that offers a unique experience for art lovers and travelers alike. It's located in the heart of Palermo. It houses over 5,000 hand-painted tiles ranging from the 16th through the 20th century. These tiles showcase a lot of the rich history and craftsmanship of Sicily. It has three rooms that you can stay for accommodations and it's open to the public from 10 to 6. But don't worry, your room is not open to the public. It's a separate apartment museum that people can visit except for Sunday. But if you stay there, you do get to have like a private showcase. We enjoyed our room and the funny thing is my husband's a tile installer, um, but it was comfortable. We slept super well. The Wi-Fi worked great and best of all, the location and also price. We dropped off our items at the hotel, then it was time to just do some exploring because it was already the afternoon. We walked towards the famous area called Quattro Conti, but we stopped along the way to just admire all the architecture. Anything unique that we found along the way with no plans, no tours, just getting lost and exploring. We got to the Quattro Canti, which is also known as Piazza Vigilena, which is essentially these four corners, these the intersection of these two streets. They showcase these historic center and these four Baroque facades, which actually represents the four seasons, one of the four Spanish kings, and one of the four patron saints of Palermo. It's an iconic crossroad where Via Maqueda and Corso Vittorio Emanuele intersects, creating a grand visual spectacle with symmetrical architecture. Also has a lot of restaurants and shops, but we didn't go all the way down because then I felt like it was getting a little bit touristy and I was afraid of a tourist trap. On our way back though, we stumble upon this amazing area where all the locals hang out and we stopped by this bar and had some delicious drinks. They had this DJ, uh, bars next to it had live music. You could just tell that this is where the locals come at. This is where the locals hang out. I'm gonna leave the name in the caption. We ended up coming here the following night. Their espresso martinis were delicious. They also serve you some popcorn and snacks. It was just like such a vibe to hang out here and people watch.
We had not had dinner and we stumbled upon drunk panini at this other piazza where we had seen the other church. It was packed. It looked delicious. It was super affordable. We're talking about hamburgers, hot dogs, definitely like late night drinking or need a hangover cure type of food. It was really cheap. And let me tell you, it was delicious. We devoured it. Our stomachs did not like it so much, but that could have been due to other things. Day one was super chill. Now it's time for day two, starting off with breakfast at our Tile Museum mansion. Day two met beach day, which is about 20 minutes away, I believe, Mondello Beach. Now, driving in Palermo is the craziest driving we've ever seen in all our trips to Italy, and we've done a few road trips. They are next level. They just love honking their horn, so it's chaotic. It's it, it's a little insane. Now, I have always shared tips about driving Italy. Don't forget to get your international Italy permit, which you get the AAA office. I just saw somebody had a horrible experience with their car rental that did not accept their regular license. And, you know, many times they don't ask for it, but you just never know. And overall, you want to be very careful while driving Italy, following the rules, asking your local host if you have to pay for a day pass on the street, which we actually did. But our host was super nice and helped us with that. The drive was scenic on the way to Mandela Beach, and it was just, I was excited to explore the day. Parking was a little confusing. Well, I was a little confused of where to park, and we had opted for Lido Valdesi, which looked amazing. So we went to the local tabaqueria for the parking tickets or to ask if there was an app, and she explained this scratch off system for parking. Have you guys ever seen this parking? You have to. It's like a scratch off and for every hour I have to do month, year, time, day. And where we could park. Now it did take us about a good 10 minutes to go around and around. On the main streets there were no parkings, but you actually found parking on the side residential streets and then we walked over to the beach. Now, is it worth staying at Alito? Absolutely, because look at the space for the public beach area. It is so small. Um, and of course, there's a lot of students and youth that are not going to pay for the Lido's and be inside. But I think if you want to have a chill beach club like day, the Lido is the way to go. Our Lido didn't have any cafes or bars open that day, but there were street vendors selling um, a bunch of things on the beach, including coconut, coffee and even drinks. Next, it was time to go home, but we stumbled upon this street food cart 
vendor that had these delicious Sicilian street food. It was like some seafood, some cheese, some things I don't even know, but it was delicious, especially after drinking Aperol Spritz. Then we had it back to our hotel and the museum part was open. So we visited the apartment with some of the museum pieces to check it out further and also to do a little drone footage outside the balcony. showered and it was time to head back to the Quattro Conti and check out the cathedral and do some more local exploring of Palermo's main attractions and of course have some dinner. We love exploring where the locals come and we found this little hidden street, not in the big tourist area, and we strongly recommend it. Live music, great drinks, and it's where the locals, wow, eat. We ended our night with some drinks, walking back, we stopped by another bar that had live music, and then we call it an evening. Overall, chill two days in Palermo.